In this lesson, our equations get a little more complex, so that structure that we set up last lesson, we're going to continue to use it in this lesson. In this lesson, we actually are going to have multiple operations in the same equation. If you look at the equations that we had back in 1.1, they were all one operation and then the variable is by itself. But that's not common. Most of the time, you'll have multiple operations to remove um, if you are trying to solve an equation. So the question then comes up, if you have more than one operation, how do you know which one to undo first? Well, if you're solving an expression, you would use PEMDAS. So we're going to undo PEMDAS or doing reverse PEMDAS. So we're going to do PEMDAS backwards. So if we have addition or subtraction, we're actually going to remove that first rather than last. If we have multiplication and division, we'll remove that after we've removed any addition and subtraction. So we're going backwards through PEMDAS this way. So let's look at example one. The height of a tree after x years is 1.5x plus 15. After how many years is the tree 24 feet tall? So we're looking for where the expression for the number of feet equals the actual quantity that we want. So the equation that we're going to set up is 1.5x plus 15 equals 24. So we're going to use that structure that we set up last lesson where we drop a line down the equal sign. And now we actually have to think to ourselves, what operations do I have? Well, I have multiplication and I have addition. So if you follow our rule about backwards PEMDAS, we're actually going to remove the addition first. So I'm going to line it up under the addition. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. And now I bring down what I have left, which is 1.5x on the left, and 24 minus 15 is 9. I still have an operation to remove, right? What operation is this? A number next to a letter means multiplication. So I'm going to remove it by dividing by 1.5 because the opposite of multiplication is division. And I want to get my calculator out. So here we go. 9 divided by 1.5 is 6. So the answer to the question, after how many years is the tree 24 feet tall? The answer is 6 years. Now, something else you might have in equation is what's called like terms. So like terms, let's define that first. They have the same variable and exponent. Now, in chapter one, we don't really deal with exponents. We're going to deal with that as we get more advanced. But right now, what you want to look, for example, is if you look at this, 8x and 6x are considered like terms because they both have an x in them. Now, you can easily combine like terms when they are on the same side of the equation. And I emphasize same side. That might be something you want to highlight and annotate because in our next lesson, we're going to look at when the like terms are on opposite sides. And the technique is different. So let's look at this example. 8x and 6x are on the same side, so we'll combine them. But if you look and you realize it's 8x minus 6x, so 8x minus 6x is 2x. So when you have like terms, before you drop any line down the equal sign, before you do any inverses, you want to combine them first. Now I'll drop a line down the equal sign and solve it. So what operations do I have? I have subtraction and multiplication. Well, if we're going backwards in PEMDAS, then the first thing that I'm going to remove is the subtraction. So I will add 25 to both sides. And that cancels out the 25. So negative 35 plus 25 is negative 10. Then I still have this multiplication to remove, so let's divide by 2, and so x equals negative 5. 
All right, another thing you might have in an equation is the distributive property. You'll know you have distributive property by having parentheses. Again, that might be something you want to annotate on your paper. So first thing you do, similar to like terms, first thing you do is combine like terms. The first thing you want to do is distribute. So if you remember the distributive property, you have these parentheses, and this 2 is right outside the parentheses, and the 2 gets distributed to everything inside the parentheses. This 2 won't get distributed to the 4 because it's not inside the parentheses. So 2 times 1 and 2 times 5x. So let's do it. 2 times 1 is 2. Bring down the minus sign. 2 times 5x, well, 2 times 5 is 10, and then you just slap the x on at the end. And now I'm going to bring down the plus 4, and the equals negative 8. Oh, look! You have like terms to combine. If you don't see it, I'll tell you it's the 2 and the 4. And the reason they're like terms is because they are both just numbers. We call those constants um, when they're just numbers without any variable, but they're the same category of numbers. So let's combine them. 2 and plus 4 is 6. So I have 6 minus 10x equals negative 8. All right, now I've got this equation. I'm ready to drop my line down the equal sign and figure out what operations I have. Well, here's where it gets a little tricky. You have a 6 and a 10. So you'd think that this is subtraction, but it's really not because the symbol goes with the number that's right next to it. So this 10 is actually considered negative 10. And this 6, since it doesn't have a sign, is actually considered a positive 6. So really what you have right here is a positive 6, and what you have right here is a negative 10. So I have to get rid of the 6 first because the 10 is multiplication. So let's get rid of that 6. So I'm going to the opposite of positive 6 is negative 6. And when you bring down the 10, make sure you bring it down as negative. The sign travels with the number. So I have negative 10x equals negative 14. And we'll practice a lot more of these in class where the variable has a negative coefficient. So I'm not subtracting 10. I'm multiplying by a negative number. So let's look at this. Multiplication of a negative is the inverse is division of the same number. So divide by negative 10, and we get x equals 1.4. So here's the situation we're at. We had a really tricky equation, and we got a decimal answer. That usually triggers students to say, I did something wrong. So how do you know whether you're right? You check it. Remember, instant answer key. It doesn't say to check, but I want to know that I got it right. So the way that you check it is you write down the original equation, the original one, not the one that you created, the original one. So two parentheses, 1 minus 5 times 1.4 plus, oh, close parentheses, plus 4 equals negative 8. That's hurting my eyes. I'm going to change colors. All right, so let's do it. Order of operations now. Now we're not doing any inversing. We're just doing the calculations, right? Think back to like fifth and sixth grade. So first is parentheses. So I have to figure out what 5 times 1.4 is, and then I'll do 1 minus that. So 5 times 1.4 is 7. So I have two parentheses, 1 minus 7 plus 4 equals negative 8. Now I have to still keep going. 2 times negative 6 plus 4 equals negative 8. Well, that's multiplication right here, so that comes first. Negative 12 plus 4 equals negative 8. Oh, phew, I got it right because this gives me negative 8, and that's what I wanted to get. So, like I said, we're going to do more practice problems like this, where you have the distributor property, where you also have a number coming first, and then the variable, which is tricky because sometimes you have a negative coefficient. But the best way to know whether you got it right is to do a check. All right, let's 
Look at the next one. We want to use the table to find the number of miles you need to run on Friday so that the mean number of miles per day is 1.5. So if you forgot, I'll tell you that mean is the average. So how do you find an average? You add up the numbers and divide by how many you have. So I have one, two, three, four, five numbers. So when I add up what I know, right, these four that I know, I get 3.5. So 3.5 plus whatever I get on Friday would be the total. So, right, because that's how you find the average. You do the total divided by the number of items, and that's the average. So I know my total is, is 3.5 plus x, right, because I just don't know what x is. I know that there are five days, and I know I want my average to be 1.5. So, why don't you pause the video and see if you can solve on your own. All right, your technique may have been different, but as long as you end up with four miles, you're doing well. Again, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.